we're at Forest Dunes Resort. You drive through what feels like about 10 miles of just straight forest, and then you turn down literally what is the only road in a pretty large vicinity, and, uh, and then you're here. And it's this uh, oasis of golf courses that sort of comes out of the forest. This is golf summer camp. I mean, Forest Dunes is in the middle of Michigan. Uh, it's in the middle of the woods. It feels like somewhere you would go on a summer retreat to go play with your buddies. We are 100% in the scenery. We are, we are in the boondocks. And you still, like, you can't quite get yourself ready to understand what the property is going to give you because you feel like there are four courses here, but really there's just like two big courses. We're purely a golf resort. We don't really have, we don't have a spa, we don't have a pool, we don't have any of the other activities. It's just golf and having fun and enjoying time with your friends and family. So the two golf courses on property are Forest Dunes, uh, designed by Tom Weiskopf. That opened in 02. 0102. Uh, it's your kind of traditional up north Michigan parkland style, uh, lush green grass, fast greens, um, and then we have the Loop, designed by Tom Doak, opened in 2016, and it is a reversible golf course. Oh, we played the Loop Black first. Well, it was Dylan and I against uh, Sean and Tyler. And so when we walked down to the first tee box at the Loop, I was a little disoriented by what exactly I was looking at. I, I had sort of a basic idea of what the course was, but I, I didn't entirely understand what uh, a reversible layout really meant. The reversibility, a lot of people don't, don't really understand it when you when you describe it to them over the phone, you really have to be here to fully understand what it means to be a reversible golf course. You'll play it clockwise and you'll think you know where you're at, but you get out there on the very next day and you find yourself thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that this is where I hit the shot yesterday on the previous direction. You feel like you are uh, kind of in a maze of golf, which is a lot of fun. You feel like you're in Tom Doak's little house of mirrors, I think was the joke that I made. It feels like you need to turn around and understand where, what hole is coming at you, what hole is the next hole. Uh, it can be a lot, but it, it's so stimulating. I think it was the mid 2000s, Doak comes in and is like, look, I live in Traverse City. I live nearby. For him to have a property in his backyard that he wanted to visit, I mean, he visited here truly more than any other property he's ever designed. I think it shows. I think when you get here, you realize that what Tom Doak decided to do with this course was get back to something essential about golf. And, uh, and as a result, it just plays with a lot of creativity. I can't say that I've ever really walked around a golf course and thought intimately about uh, strategy in the way that I did when we went on the loop. Um, and I think you're almost forced to do that by the way that, that the course is designed. So the loop is, it's not a, it's not a common idea. Um, it's, it's, we believe it's the first and only true reversible course in America. It's so much different from your typical up north Michigan golf, meaning it's firm and fast, it's got fescue fairways, the greens, the greens, it kind of looks like there's nothing behind them, so it, it's a little intimidating, but it, it's, it's playable, um, it's, it's wide open, so that, you know, a high handicapper can have some success. It's, it's awesome to think that something like that was possible and that it was built and uh, that we have it here at Forest Dunes. All right, so the first match came down to the wire. James and I actually rallied down the stretch James actually even got in position to two putt from the fringe on 18, which would have tied the match, would have been dramatic. I don't know if the moment just got too big for him or, uh, or what happened, but did not convert the two putt. So that was a tough loss for us. We went over to Forest Dunes the next morning though, feeling optimistic. Forest Dunes is a radically different golf course 
than the loop. I think the loop, because it's new, because the reversibility is, is you know, such an attraction, means it gets a lot of attention. But you could definitely make an argument that Forest Dunes is the better golf course of the two. Well, I think it was important that Tom Weisskopf came here first because, as we've said, uh, it's in the middle of relative nowhere in northern Michigan, and so you need a foundation. And he built the foundation for Forest Dunes and created what is a top 100 course. I thought the Dunes course had a ton of really, really interesting uh, characteristics to it, and it required a lot of like really unique shot making. Uh, many of which I did not have the mental fortitude to be pulling off when we play it on Tuesday morning. Um, but that being said, I, I really love the way that the course was sort of shaped into the land that was there. It is a little bit tighter. It's, it's a classic Parkland course. It's scenic. It was an awesome condition for us. I would say that you have to be careful when you're going from the dunes course over to the loop because they play so differently. Um, to have those be just a couple hundred yards away from each other, it, it almost doesn't make sense. And if you talk about uh, the loop makes you put your architecture hat on, the difference in the two courses turns you into a, a superintendent or at least an admirer of superintendents and what it is that they do to keep these courses so different. Yeah, no, it didn't go well. Um, <laughs> it didn't go very well at all for the first uh, two matches that we played. My golf game, as ever, is close uh, to being great and, and always like kind of teeteringly close to being horrible. And so uh, I made some progress. We shot one really good round on the Forest Dunes course. I was pretty happy with. Um, and then we played uh, the loop red in the, in the afternoon. A couple of the little details of walking around the loop make you realize how special it is. So you'll be just cruising down a fairway and then boom, like a little bunker just pops up next to you and you're like, wait a minute, that, that doesn't really make sense for this hole. And it's not until the next day when you're playing it in the opposite direction that maybe you see that same bunker and you're like, oh, it starts to come together. The pieces of the puzzle start to make a little more sense. It's, it's truly a masterpiece, I think. In terms of uh, reversible courses, there's not that many for it to beat. There's St. Andrews, which just isn't used as a reversible course anymore. I'm trying to think of another one that really can compete with this. And ultimately, this is like, this is the top 100 property. The course is the 34th uh, ranked course on our top 100 courses you can play. And so, again, you can play it twice. <laughs> and it's worth like a top 50 course publicly. In, in America, and then you can go over to the other course, and that's, uh, I think, 73rd in the top 100 courses you can play. So, like, this is a top 100 property, which uh, it doesn't let you down in any way. Man, it was tough starting out with a couple losses to Sean and to Tyler, uh, especially with this being James's first trip aboard. We came to the last match knowing we needed something, we needed to spark. We ended on the win which as I said yesterday, it's a bit like the Ryder Cup. It doesn't matter if you win the first two matches, but to sort of retain the cup and take it home with you, that's, that's much more important in the long run.